Hey everyone, welcome back to episode two of our Unreal Engine building system series. In this episode, we're going to expand on what we built in episode one and start creating our building hub. In the last episode, we set the groundwork for our building system by creating data tables, structures, and setting up a basic UI for selecting and spawning building parts. We also covered modular design and snapping meshes to a grid for easy placement. If you haven't seen episode one yet, make sure to check it out first. Okay, so let's get started by picking up where we left off. We're going to create a widget that will act as the hub for our building supplies. First, I've created a new folder called widgets and inside we'll add a new widget blueprint. Let's name this one building hub UI. When you open it up, just like we did before, add a canvas panel. This will serve as the base for everything else in the widget. Now let's create a little control panel for the button widget we made in the last episode. Get an overlay from the palette, drag it into the canvas, and resize it into a rectangle shape. Drag in an image component to act as the background for the control panel. Make sure it covers the entire overlay, and then adjust the color and opacity to whatever style you prefer. You can make this design your own. This is just the bare minimum to get our system working. Head back to the library and drag a wrap box into the canvas. Place it inside the overlay and extend it to the edges. Adjust the padding to something like 30 for the sides and 80 for the top or set it to your own style. Finally, add a text block to the top of the panel. Align it properly and give it the label Building Hub. Now our control panel is ready to be filled with the buttons we made earlier. Now let's find the Building Select button we created in episode one. Drag it into the wrap box inside our control panel. Make sure you set the data table to show the wall button we created earlier or any other item you want. Next, we'll go back to our player character blueprint. Remove the old setup we had for accessing the buttons or whatever you use to get access to it. Now create a new widget using Building Hub UI and add it to the viewport. We'll refine this later, but for now, this gets the job done. Now we need to give the player access to their mouse for selecting the buttons. Back in the Building Hub UI event graph, go to Event Construct, get a player controller, and then drag out and get Set Input Mode Game and UI. This will allow the player to interact with the game and the widget from the player controller. Drag out and get Set Show Mouse Cursor and make sure it's enabled. Now when you test this in the game, everything should work perfectly and the UI will be responsive. But as you'll notice, we can't place any builds yet. So in the next step, we'll create the function that lets us place objects in the world. Head over to your Actors folder and create a new Actor Blueprint, naming it Place Build BP. Inside this blueprint, Add a static mesh component and call it build. Now head into the event graph and find event begin play. Drag in your build static mesh and create a set static mesh node. From the new mesh input, promote it to a variable and call it build mesh. Make sure you enable instance editable and expose on spawn so that the mesh can be updated when we spawn the actor. Next, let's create a new function inside our placement blueprint. In the placement BP, create a new function and call it place build. In this function, drag out and create a spawn actor node, selecting place build BP as the class to spawn. Split the transform pin so you can access the location and rotation separately. Drag in your location of mesh variable, the one we set earlier, and link it to the location input of the spawn actor. Next, drag in your build mesh variable and connect it to the build mesh variable on the spawn actor node. Once that's done, hit save and compile. Now let's head back to our building hub UI. In the event graph, find an empty spot and set up an input for placing the build. For now, we'll use the left mouse button as our trigger, but you can set it to whatever works for your game. From the pressed output, drag out and get a get actors of class node. Select placement BP so we can access the function we just created. From the return value, get place build. This will now trigger the place build function on our placement blueprint whenever we click the left mouse button. Head into the game and test it out. Every time I left click, a build is placed, simple as that. But let's take it a step further and add the ability to rotate builds. Head back into the placement BP event graph and find the set world transform node. Split the rotation pin and promote the yaw to a variable. Let's call this rotate. In the place build function, do the same. Split the rotation input and drag in your new rotate variable. Now let's add the functionality for rotating in the UI. Go back to your building hub UI widget. Just below the place trigger, let's assign a key for rotation. For example, the R key. 
When this key is pressed, get the placement actor and from the return value, access the rotate variable and set it. Then get the rotate variable from the placement BP. And then drag out the rotate variable and get an at node. For clean turns, we'll use 90 degrees, but if you want more control, you can set it to 45 degrees or any other value. Once you're done, compile and save, then jump into the game and test it out. Now with each left click, the build is placed. And with the R key, the build rotates smoothly. Now I stop here. Let's make it obvious when we're in edit mode with a selected wall by changing the color of the build we want to place. To do this, head into your placement BP and drag out from the mesh variable. Get a set overlay material node. If you already have a cool material like a holographic effect or a glowing material, you can select that here. But if you don't have one yet, let's quickly make one. Go back to your build system folder and add a new material. Let's name it glow underscore M. Open the material and set the blend mode to translucent. Press and hold one, then click in the graph to create a constant node. This controls the opacity of the material. Set it to 0.5, press and hold four, then click to add a constant four vector node, which allows you to pick the color for your glowing material. Create an add node and connect the color node to the emissive color. In the B input of the add node, you can control the strength of the glow effect. Now go back into placement BP and use this new glow M material for the set overlay material node. Jump back into your game and you'll see the selected build now has a glowing effect, making it clear that you're in edit mode. Okay, next up, let's add more builds to our data table. Open the data table we created in episode one and duplicate the wall row. Rename the new row to door one and change the mesh. If you have the starter content enabled, you'll find a door frame mesh you can use. If not, you can follow our modular design process to create your own doors and windows. For now, we're not adding any custom icons, but later we'll show you where to find free game icons to polish your UI. Fill in the rest of the data table fields as needed. While we're at it, I'll quickly change the wall mesh we made earlier to the starter content wall so everything lines up perfectly. Now let's update the button select widget to reflect these changes. First, copy and delete your existing data table setup and then paste it into the event pre-construct. This ensures that the widget updates in the back end before it's rendered in the game. Now grab the image from your button, drag it into the graph and get set brush from texture. Connect the data table's image directly into the texture input. Finish off by reconnecting the mesh back into your spawn actor node. Also, since we've changed the mesh in our data table, we need to update the grid size in the placement blueprint from 300 to 400 to match our new mesh size, ensuring everything snaps into place correctly. Now let's go back into the building hub UI and add a new button widget so we can select between a wall or a door. Add some padding to the buttons for better spacing. Update the new button select widget to pull the correct data from the data table. I'll also adjust the icon slightly for better visibility, but you can skip this if your images are already set up. Now, when you jump into the game, you can select between the wall and door, but you might notice an issue. If you select a new build, they double up, leaving the old build still active. This is an easy fix. In the building select widget, we need to create a new function to prevent multiple active placements. Let's call this function check active. First, get all actors of class and select placement BP. Put this in a for each loop so we can loop through all active placement blueprints. Drag the array element into an is valid node. This checks if the actor is already in the world. If the actor is valid, it will trigger a destroy actor node. So then pull out the array elements again and get a destroy actor node. To ensure this works correctly, we need to add this new function just before the spawning of the placement blueprint. This ensures that when a new build is selected, the old one is removed. Once we test it out, you'll see that we can now switch between our two meshes seamlessly. With that done, you're at the stage where you can start adding as many builds as you like. Just fill up your data table and add them to your building hub UI. And that's it for episode two. In the next episode, we'll be adding even more functionality a cancel button for deselecting builds, a way to toggle the building hub UI with a click of a button rather than it always being active, updating icons for the build items, removing builds that have already been placed. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. 
Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see added, and we'll try to fit it into upcoming episodes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when episode 3 goes live.